ERCOT is asking everyone across Texas to conserve power this weekend. This after six power generators tripped offline yesterday, causing the grid to lose about 2,900 megawatts of electricity. The fact that the water is down over like 30% of, of lake level and there's tens of millions of people relying on this water in the southwest, um, it's disturbing. The drop in water threatens the largest power source in the region. Hydroelectric power produced at the Glen Canyon Dam is part of a collective that serves 5 million people across six states. 80% of that power is made here. Bob Martin is the deputy power manager. Talk about the noise that we're hearing. What is that? I always say that's the sound of money. The generators generate the power and it comes to this transformer behind us and it's put on these overhead transmission lines. It can go to Phoenix, it can go to Las Vegas it can go anywhere the, the connections are made. But as the water level drops, it sinks closer to a dangerous threshold. We're about 26 feet, 27 feet around that area of being away from minimum power pool. And that's the point where we can no longer generate power through the turbines. In a proposed plan to stem that, a dam further upstream in Utah would release more water, an agreement made jointly by four states and the Bureau of Reclamation. If approved, 500,000 acre feet of water, or 163 billion gallons, would flow down to Lake Powell starting May 1st. Is it sustainable in the long term to keep bringing a little bit more water down every year? In my opinion, uh... You don't know you're spending more than you're making. But without water, energy production will inevitably go down and prices will go up. The precious resource trickling away. How much of this is a, a climate change issue, a usage issue, a population issue? Uh, it's, it's probably all of the above. We can't ignore this any longer. Nature is just not giving us what we used to get, so adjustments have to be made. The surprising news from California. Despite the historic drought, the state is using more water, not less. Water usage rose 19% in March compared to the same period in 2020. And now unprecedented new water restrictions are being imposed, affecting 4 million people in Southern California, where beginning next month, outdoor watering will be limited to two days per week. We're three years into a major drought. And the first three months of this year were the driest ever recorded in California. And the California Senate is going one step further, passing the bill to limit indoor water usage. Right now, the state standard for daily indoor usage is 55 gallons per person. But under the bill passed by the Senate, that would be lowered to 42 gallons in the coming years. In the meantime, Lake Mead, which supplies water to seven states, is evaporating before our eyes, with levels dropping 170 feet since the 1980s. With that white line to remind us what full is, it's definitely, it's, it's obvious something has is, is changed. Fierce winds and extreme drought continue to fuel out-of-control wildfires in New Mexico. The fires have already burned over 120,000 acres, and it's not even fire season yet. Here's what the dry weather looks like from space. Amazing satellite imagery of fires on the left and dust storms rolling in from the north. Now, as a result of this, reservoirs are dangerously low right now. Lake Mead, which is the country's largest man-made reservoir, just hit an all-time record low. Lake Powell is down 40 feet from a year ago, and it's now only a 24% capacity. Now, the drought, which is the worst the West has seen in 1,200 years, is getting worse. 1,200 years, but it's getting worse. Last week, Southern California declared an unprecedented water shortage emergency. It's not not even dry season. So why is this happening? Let's first talk about the short-term reason for it. Since January, we've seen very little rain across the West. In fact, where you see the darkest shades of brown, California, Nevada, Utah, even Colorado, that's the driest such period on record. And it's doing a number on snowfall. Wherever you see the red dots, that is no snow. There's no snow 
and they really rely on that snowfall because that melts off and it fills reservoirs to get them through dry season, to get them through the summer. There isn't any snow in a lot of places. Now, the longer term reason, unlucky conditions for the past 24 years. 11 of those years have been La Nina, and that tends to dry it out in the deep southwest. And so a good reason, a good chunk of the reason uh, why we have a drought out west right now is because of natural variability. However, a study found that human-caused climate change is responsible for 42 percent of that. And the reason why is because all that extra heat in the atmosphere is evaporating more moisture from the soil and vegetation and making what was already a pretty bad Bad drought, a historic drought, the worst in over a thousand years. As a result, fire season is now three months longer than it used to be, and the future of water in the West is uncertain. Jeff Berardelli. That crane picks up about seven tons of trash with each grab, and it's slowly fed into the chute for combustion. This combustion is known as waste to energy, or energy recovery, because it's used to generate electricity. The intense heat converts water in 21 miles of pipes around the combustor into steam that turns a turbine. It also creates carbon and toxic ash, but unlike landfills, it doesn't emit any methane. 2,000 degrees. Fahrenheit, a very efficient burn, making 23 megawatts, and we only use about 3 megawatts to operate the whole facility. Part of what's burned here is some 27,000 annual tons of waste from big companies like American Airlines, Quest Diagnostics, Sunny D, and Subaru. They're part of a growing movement by companies and governments to send less to landfills. You can see there are some car seats and the like. This actually comes from a an automotive manufacturer that doesn't want to send these materials to a landfill. Amazon and other retailers also use this combustion to dispose of returns they deem unfit to recycle, resell, or donate. It is